All right, everything is dry again, and I put a little bit of the dragon fruit paint onto my palette. And I am again using a smaller dome blender. This is a size six. Pick up a little paint, and I'm going to scrub it on the paper towel this time because we don't want strong color. But we're going to make cheeks for each of these snowmen. Now, on my other tray, each of the snowmen is facing towards the center of the tray. So kind of keep that in mind. We're going to keep them facing the same way. So I'm going to be doing them on this side. It's easier for me to do for you guys. And it'll just be upside down. But it's kind of in the middle. A little bit lower than center. And you're just going to tap in some little pink cheeks. Don't want too much. There. All right, the cheeks are dry. And it's time we do the little eyes next, I think. And to do the eyes, I use either a stylus or a very fine brush. So you could do either, as you see on this tray, there's little closed eyes here and here where you, you can curve them down, you can curve them up, and then you could do dots. And I like doing the eyes first because then it gives you, you know, a starting point. I don't trace the pattern in, and I really encourage you guys to freehand it. Um, now, the styluses, they come in different sizes. You guys probably know that, but I'm just kind of stating the obvious. I mean, there's bigger points, and then there's little tiny points and there's itty bitty points and you want to do something that's gonna fit the size of your snowman like this one would be probably too big because the paint tends to spread as you put it down so I think they have too big of eyes and this one's too small this one's just right it's in the middle and you could play on a scrap of wood or something like that and for this step, I'm going to hold it in place, and all of our snowmen are going to be looking with their chins toward the middle and the top of their heads toward the outside. So I'll be rotating the frame, and they'll go a little bit to the top of the cheeks, right? So we'll bring it in for you, which I actually got it the right way. And I have black paint on my palette I dip the stylus in and I'm just gonna put a dot and a dot and I kind of make them oval and as you can see they're not perfect sometimes but that's okay we don't tell anybody you could fix them up if they're really bad you can just take a little white paint and to go over them and I'm gonna skip that one I'll give him little um, line eyes later on and I'll add in the dotted eyes like this or maybe I'll do that now I'll do that now cuz then I'll speed up you could watch me do the eyes quickly and then you won't have to go through and the reason I'm going in in this direction is so I don't stick my hand in what I already had. So to do the little crescent eyes, you just two little two little lines, okay? So you could watch me quickly do these.
and there you have it. I'm really sorry about the zooming. I, I'm getting used to the camera. I got some new equipment and I thought, well, it's better to zoom them and hopefully it's not annoying you too much. I'm just trying to get to show you how to do them best. Okay, so there we have it. And the important thing on this step is to really, really let them dry. Because if you stick your hand in them, you're going to be frustrated with yourself. Because I, I could tell you this from experience. I do it, and I've done it. So go get a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you like to drink and take a little break. And we'll be right back to do the noses. All right, the eyes are dry, and the next thing we're going to do is the noses. And I, as I said, I have um, drawings of all the different little faces in the pattern, but I'm really hoping that you want to try to freehand things a little bit. And I'm going to show you how I did my noses. Um, I use a round brush. This is a size 3. For this size it would be good. You want something that's going to hold a little paint and come to kind of a little bit of a point and this brush works fine. This is a um, Golden Natural 3. I like the silver brush golden line. They're very soft and absorbent. They hold a lot of paint and they're a nice quality brush. And I'm going to use my orange paint. This is bright orange. And you just pick up some paint. And you look at your little faces and kind of think of which direction you want the nose to go in. So, like this guy, the eyes are there. And I'm just going to, you start wide. And you just make a zigzag. This isn't hard at all. And there's his nose. And you want him to go in different directions. So... This little guy, he looks more like he's going to face this way. So you start in between the eyes and then just scribble. And this little guy up here, we're going to go. Maybe his will come from the side and go up. This guy here. See how easy this is. You don't need any lines. You can make the noses any direction you feel like. Try to vary them a little bit. If you could. When you know you're going to go, say I'm going in that direction, you want to make your wider part like that. Okay, so start that way. And then just wiggle and drag and they could point up. They're going to be a little bit transparent the first round, which is fine. Because we're going to shade them and highlight them. So that'll fill them in a little more and you could always add more. And I'm going to keep this in real time because we're already halfway done. And see, like this, it looks like my eyes have him looking that way, so I'm going to go this way with him. Right over the cheek area. This guy's kind of in the middle, so you kind of make your decision. And by the time you get around, like this is pretty dry. You'd still want to not stick your hand in it if you can help it. But it's not like the eyes where it's going to be a disaster. Trying to just make a squiggly line. This guy looks like he's looking this way. This one's looking this way. This guy, 
put his straight down. Okay, so there are the base coats of his nose. So once that is done, put my brush in my water, we need to shade the noses. And what we're going to do is we're going to shade the area next to the snowman and under. So this area like the bridge of the nose and under. And for that, I'm using an eighth inch shader angle brush. I like the little one for that. And I love these tradition brushes um, for their eighth inch angle shaders. I don't know if you can still get them, but they have nice long bristles, which I like, and a good chisel point. So a lot of the eighth inch brushes are very short. And I like the length and the bristles because you could hold much more water. And I'm going to use um, traditional burnt sienna paint for that. And we're going to do it just how we did our edges, where I'm taking a little bit of paint on the tip. I hope you could see that. And you kind of swipe it on your board, your um, palette. I hope you can see that over to the side. And then I'm going to... You just go next to the snowman and then under and I kind of wiggle it. If it's too strong, rinse your brush and you can pull some off. You know, it might take you one or two to get a how you like it. So just to put a little bit of shadow and to accent that nose. So like this one's turned up, you're going to shade it next to the face and then underneath and it'll make it stand out just a little more. Okay, so keep going with this and I will I will speed this up. You can turn your piece, of course, especially when they're going in the opposite direction. And there you have it. Let them dry and then we'll go on to the highlights and the eyes. Okay, the noses are all dry. Um, one thing I wanted to do that I missed, but it's not too late to do it now, is I wanted to add some glamour dust to the snowmen, to the white parts. And I like to do this because in the original tray it gave like a really nice little sparkle to them which I don't know if you could see right now with the light as it is but I liked the the um, sparkle on the snowman against the shimmer on the background it was nice with the details done in a flat matte finish and I like the Deco our glamour dust because it's very tiny particles of glitter in there. It's not like chunks of in your face glitter. It's a very finely ground glitter. So it gives a very nice subtle effect. So before we go further, we're going to do that. And I put some glamour dust clear on my palette. And I'm using my, my size 8 dome blender. And I'm just gonna swab it on to the snowman. And I'm gonna try to avoid the eyes and nose. If you get some on there, it's not gonna matter. But if you just go around and do a little bit on each, it'll give it that shimmer. And I think in the instructions, I had it done before I did the eyes and nose, right after I did the cheeks. 
but I kind of forgot to do that. So as you can see, I'm just dancing it on the top here. And it's a clear base. All the colors are in a clear base. So that's what's kind of nice. Um, you could use them over other colors for cool effects. And if you just want to get one and don't want to get, um, you know, the whole set of colors, get the clear. It's called Ice Crystals. And if, as you can see, as it goes over the cheeks, it takes on any color that's underneath. But it'll still leave a sparkle on it, so it's pretty nice. So I'm just going to go around here and do, now see, I got a little on the eyes. It's not going to matter. If it really bugs you, you could go over the eyes with black, but like I said in the instructions, I think I put it in before I put the eyes on. So, And that's another thing too, like when you use other um, paint on glitter, I find anyway, and try to paint over it, um, the chunks get in the way sometime when you're doing line work and stuff like the eyes. There we go. That's the last one. So that was a step we missed, or I missed, I should say. So they're all done. I'm going to let them dry again. And then we'll be back and we'll finish up the nose and the faces. All right, so the Glamour Dust is dry. Um, we're going to highlight the noses. We want to add a little brightness on the top. And I'm going to use primary yellow, which is semi-transparent. And I'm using my round number three brush again. And all I want to do on this is just a little swipe. So you're kind of just filling in on the top of the nose to give it a little highlight. And it might not show as much because the color is, as I said, semi-transparent. But really then, that takes the stress out of it because you just wider at the top and then taper it. All I'm doing, I, I don't know a better word than just swipe in some color on each of the noses. Give them a little bit of highlight. Okay. If you feel you put too much on any of them, just go back to your orange pile and add some orange in. These are so loose and easy to do. They're really fun. They're stress-free. Okay, then the next thing we have to do is the mouth. And I would take a medium stylus again, not too big of a one, and your black paint. I have it here on my palette still. And we're going to dip it in. And when I do the mouths, I want the bigger dots on the top and they're going to taper down. So in one dip I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. And see they get smaller as you dot them in. Dip it in, dot, dot, dot. Simple. Now this guy is to the side so I'll probably do like four. One, two, three, four. Okay? This guy's looking that way. One, two, three, four. And sometimes you could put a little one on that side. And the pressure you use on your stylus is going to make a little difference too. So you could go one, two, three, and hit lighter as you want the dots smaller, okay? Like 
this one. One, two, three, four, five. His got small and quick, so we're going to go over them. One, two, three, four, five. Same here. One, two, three, four. This is quick and fun. This will come from both sides because his nose is coming straight down. One, two, three. Dip. One, two, three. Okay. And sometimes I dip over here. If I if I pick up, I if it gets a lot of paint on there, it'll get too big. So wipe it on your paper towel and start over because it builds up on there if you're doing a lot of them, like with the big tray. And again, as it comes around on your wrist, watch these guys over here so you don't stick your arm in them. And I want one more there. Okay, so there is their little faces. Now, I do want to highlight their eyes. For this, you can use a stylus or your brush, depending on what you like to do. Now, I have a tiny stylus. I don't know if you can see it right there. But that's still pretty big for the eye, but we'll see. I think I'm better off using my Micron brush. This is a 15-0 lining brush from Dynasty Micron. If you notice, I use a lot of different types of brushes. And all you want to put is a little highlight in there. Okay? So all these guys with the open eyes. We're going to dot. The trick with doing this is just very little pressure. You don't want to push down on it. You want to load your brush. So there's a lot of paint on there, but I'm barely touching it. I'm leaning my arm. I'm anchoring it on my table. And I'm just barely watching when the tip hits. And I'm not moving my arm, I'm actually turning the tray. And if you if you make your dot too big, um, rather than try to wipe it off, you're better off just letting it dry and then come back with a little bit of black paint. And then you could go over where the boo-boo was. Because if you try to wipe it, it's going to smear and then anything around it, like say if your mouth wasn't completely dry, you're going to wind up smearing that too. So you don't really want to you don't, I know it's like nature to go and wipe it right away, but I tend to wait. So there we have it. Um, highlights are done. Again, we're going to let this dry because that's what we have to do before we move on. And then we're just going to um, stencil things, some snowflakes on them, and finish the edges, and then we should be almost done. Okay, I think everything is dry. Before I stencil the snowflakes on, I, I think I'm going to finish the edges. When I do my edges, I use either a Deerfoot stippler or a very a stiffer flat brush. Um, this ruby satin line from Silver, 
is a stiffer, almost like a fabric brush, and it's really nice for doing edges. The reason I like a stiffer brush is because then you don't tend to go over onto the piece as much. And this is why I, I tend to grab my Deerfoot brush for that. Now this edge in the tray, the inside edge, is going to be done in Prussian blue to match the um, shading that we have there. So all we have to do is carry this line down to the inside. It doesn't even have to go all the way down because the tray is going to, the center part is going to sit in there for the most part. And when you do two, my two-piece ornaments and trays, um, I try to tell people, try to not put like really thick paint here on this edge because if it's too thick, it's going to cause the MDF to swell and then the inside won't fit as nice. And as you can see, if I come up the, the edge that's routed, this is a routed edge, so it's kind of rounded over, um, you could wipe it a little bit if you feel it's too strong. So I'm just going to keep, I mean, keep your brush a little wet. I don't like when that shows, so we're going to go over that again. There you go. And when you do this, it pulls the whole design together. I mean, it looks a lot neater. We've been looking at it with the ugly inside edge the whole time while we were painting. And it's kind of satisfying to see it all come together nicely. Whoops. Yeah, my fingers are going to be blue. But that's okay. I guess you could do this earlier on if you want. I guess it doesn't matter, but I tend to do it by the end. Because then if you get any paint there from other things, you can cover it up get any boo-boos or drips or whatever it's good to have it done by the end let me rinse my brush I'm, I'm just bleeding in that line you don't want that line there really And the MDF is kind of, it's kind of bumpy there. It's rough. Um, you don't want to sand that edge because it will change the shape and your inside piece might not fit nice. So I kind of just leave it alone and it blends. It never seems to be a problem. Okay, there we go. So that's the inside edge, and for the outer edge, you could do the same. I'm not going to do the whole outer edge to show you. I'll show you a little bit. bit. See, when I, when I use the Deerfoot brush, I do it this way. And if I want to use this ruby satin, the stiffer flat brush, what I do is start from the middle and pull the paint toward me. And see, then it doesn't tend to bleed over the side. And you just go around, and I go around that way. Okay? But I am not going to do that right now. I think, whoops, that was clever. I think we'll just get on to stenciling. And for the stencils, I am going to put the centerpiece back in so that I can see what's going on. Now there's a little nick in here where I had a drill and it lines up. You can usually see the hole there and I'm going to push that in. I have my marker here so I'm centered and I'm laying it flat. It's not glued yet and what I have are some 
little small snowflake stencils. Um, I started selling these very recently. Like, this is the first project I'm using them. Um, I learned on my silhouette how to make them. I drew them up myself, so they're my own design. And I'm going to sell some little background type stencils for you guys for projects, but you could use whatever you have on hand. And you don't even have to do snowflakes if you, if you don't want. So I need to get my stencil brushes. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So I have my, my medium sized stencil brush. Um, and I am going to put some snowflakes here. We're going to go random, and this is not a big piece, so I want to stick to more of the smaller ones on the edge, and I'll use some of the bigger ones in the middle. And as always for stenciling, it's hard to see white paint on my white palette, but we're loading up the brush, scrubbing it on the paper towel, and I'm using white paint first. And they don't have to be perfect. Just tap them in. Do them randomly. I have, I included little swirls in my stencil. So we could have little wisps going by. This really makes them look kind of finished. Let's see what we're going to do. Stencils make backgrounds really kind of fun, I think. You don't want to go overboard, but it's nice to have something cute in there, isn't it? There. So there's your stencils on the center. I just like to put it in there um, to get an idea of how things are going to be. And then you could do partial ones. You don't have to do the whole stencil. And have them fade out. Go over the edge. And just kind of Work your way around. Try to vary them. There's probably about six or eight designs here on my little card, so there's plenty to make them look all happy. Now you can see I haven't reloaded my brush, I don't think, or yeah, I haven't reloaded it yet. Just hold down in a couple taps. You want them kind of, again, as an afterthought. Um, I don't want the same one. Here, we'll put this one. And a spiky one, maybe. And how's that? That probably looks good. That's probably enough. Maybe, yes, I think that's pretty good. I think I'm going to go over this one a little bit more. I can't see it. Sometimes when the paint dries, it fades in. There we go. Especially on camera, you want them to show up. So, there you have it. Our little snowflake tray. Now... In order to put this together, you run a bead of glue around the bottom edge here, and you make sure the hole's lined up. It's marked on your pattern, and then you just push the piece into it, and what it does is it pushes the center back a little bit, and you can see it on the back. That's sticking out, and that's what it sits on. So the edge is raised up a little, so it's almost like a plate. And your candle goes in the middle then. It can sit in the middle. 
So it's very stable because the raised part, nothing sits on. And this is what anchors it. So that is our little snowman candle tray. Um, I hope you enjoyed the techniques that I showed you. Um, and the pattern I had mentioned that if you wanted your snowflakes to shimmer, you could go over them with the Extreme Sheen Silver. But I kind of like the flat look of the snowflakes with the shimmery background. I think it looks nice. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I hope you enjoyed following along with this video with me. If you enjoyed everything, um, please like and comment on my video here on YouTube because then you'll be able to see more of my videos and I'll know that you appreciate what I'm doing here and I'll do more. That encourages me to do more. Um, the stencils are available on my website as well as the full color pattern that's about 15 pages. It has all the step-by-step -step drawings and I did put line work in here and it has a paint chart so you can um, get your colors. If you're, if you're a different brand than DecoArt, I've always put paint spots in now so you can match up your colors with paints you already have. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you again. Take care.